Union Banking Corporation was liquidated by the U.S. government, and Prescott Bush received $1.5 million for his holdings in his Nazi business, and that was the beginning of the Bush family fortune for all intents and purposes. George Bush takes his inspiration from what he learned in Skull and Bones and from the Thule Society that Hitler and Goebbels and Goring cut their teeth in, Bohemian Grove, these evil organizations that perpetrate the ugly things that these criminals are doing to this country for which they must be held accountable. They are the most violent, dirtiest people on the face of the earth. Somewhere, Americans are going to have to take their country back and start finding out who are these people. Who are these people we call our representatives, the Bushes. George Bush, the president, his father, went around the country talking about a new world order. The people who are running this country from behind the scenes do not care a thing about Americans or bloodshed anywhere. You were both in Skull and Bones, the secret society. It's so secret we can't talk about it. What does that mean for America? The conspiracy theorists are going to go wild. I'm sure they are. I don't know. I haven't seen the web. Number 322. Two. <laughs> Sir. Are you a member, were you a member of Skull and Bones in college and Bush? Were you in the same <laughs> secret society? That's all right. Let me answer this question. And what you're looking at here, staggeringly, is um, a group of people, some of the most famous people in America, in long gowns. Behind them there, you see a 40-foot stone owl. And there's the fire between them, next to the lake at Bohemian Grove. Now, one might wonder, understandably, why the people that run the banking, political, um, economic system, and the media, in America should be dressed in long robes doing a ceremony to a 40-foot stone owl. I think we should be told. And no doubt you'll be hearing about all the differences between John Kerry and George W. Bush. Uh, but we've discovered they do have something in common. During their respective college days at Yale, they both belong to a group called Skull and Bones. He's come pretty close. She was part of a team that successfully recorded part of the initiation ceremony that takes place in the tomb's courtyard. Okay, you have the doorway here. Yeah. Okay, then to the right you have a hedge, and yeah. then you have um, an evergreen tree. If you follow yeah. that line straight back, the courtyard's in there. Ah, okay. So, so that's where they have the ceremonies in the The outdoor room. part of it. Part of it was indoors. So we only got to see the outdoor part. Right. We only got to, and, and to listen to the outdoor part. God only knows what went on indoors. And what did you hear? What, what was it you know? You managed to get this unique Oh, access it was disgusting. It. it was gross. I mean, they were pretending to murder people. And what was the tone of it, though? Was it, was it jokey? Or was it quite no, it wasn't jokey at all. It was, it was sick. It's about the only thing to describe it. It was sick. Get the phone now! What you're hearing is the first recording ever made of the Skull and Bones initiation ceremony. It has never been broadcast before. Fifteen new members of the club are being introduced into the macabre rituals of Skull and Bones by the senior students who are about to graduate. The club has what some might see as a strange fascination with death, skulls and bones. 
There's the chance too. Difficult to hear first of all, but including the devil equals death, and death equals death. <laughs> But when you get into a secret society of spirit worshippers, then, and especially when you're invited there by the direction of the higher-ups in the spirit world, you never get out of there alive. And he told us, he says, look, we worship spirits. We worship Lucifer, the Lucifer and all his angels. They're just as beautiful as they did before they were cast out of heaven. He says there was a misunderstanding in the whole thing. He says among the inhabitants of the galaxies. And he says our master was misunderstood. And they always praised the, the great master, Satan, as a super intelligent being that he is. Beautiful to behold. And if he ever appears to you, you won't be able to look upon him because he'll be too bright. What have Herbert Hoover, Art Linkletter, Jack London, and Richard Nixon all had in common? Well, they've all been members of the exclusive all-male Bohemian Club in California, where every year at this time, the elite from around the country get together for two and a half weeks of uh, fun and games. Among its members are businessmen like Leonard Firestone and Edgar Kaiser, and political figures like Gerald Ford, Henry Kissinger, William French Smith, and George Shultz. President Reagan, Vice President Bush, and Defense Secretary Weinberger are members of other camps. Richard Nixon is a Bohemian, and so are high-ranking executives of such companies as Eastern Airlines, Standard Oil of Indiana, and Bank of America. Privacy is one of the Grove's most cherished virtues. Members may not photograph, record, speak, or write about activities at the retreat. While many public officials are Grove members, the press is a distinctly unwelcome guest. We're from ABC News. Well, get back there. Get back there. Can we talk to somebody in there? Get back there. You see, for over 120-plus years in Northern California, in Sonoma County, on a 2,700-acre secluded redwood grove, leaders from around the world, prime ministers, chancellors, presidents, governors, again, the heads of industry, banking, academia, the media, Hollywood, travel there to engage in bizarre ancient Canaanite Luciferian Babylon mystery religion ceremonies. We were inside four hours. That's only one day out of the two weeks that they meet there for the admitted summer fire festival of the Bohemian Club. Thank 
Once again, this summer, 